Hello, David, and everybody listening to your, your great program. Um, Rebel basically is a, a training company in essence. Uh, we call ourselves the business school, but I think that uh, what we provide to people is much more than just business training. Uh, but in the name, we have the, the business school kind of words because uh, our whole mission in life as a, as a company is to provide free education to everyone and anyone that needs it. Yeah, we are providing high quality education that is taught in Oxford University, that is has been taught at HEC Paris, that has been taught uh, at Henley Business School and other top universities across the world to everyone that might need it. And we are talking about um, uh, 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 underprivileged communities in Namibia, we are talking about um, uh, refugee camps in Morocco, we are talking about uh, migrant communities in, in Colombia, and also disadvantaged communities in developed countries like France and the UK. Um, as I said earlier, our whole mission is simply to democratize the access to high quality education because most people uh, that want to start a business think that going to university, going to a business school is a prerequisite and we want them to know that uh, it is not. That uh, through the very simple and action-focused education that we give, um, it is possible to actually start a business and do what you love for a living without having to, you know, uh, go into debt and, and, and spend a lot of money going to a university or uh, getting a, a, a big loan, which is sometimes restricted to many people. That is what uh, what Rebel is, is about. What, what is the big difference? And is it simply that uh, people don't need a lot of money to get a business going or is there more to it than that? Yeah, I think that, that it's, a, it's a combination of, of, of factors. Um, we believe that it is not necessary to uh, have money in order to make money, which is a big difference from traditional business education that uh, sometimes forces people into getting a loan, finding an investor, uh, or simply you know going out and, and finding somebody that will invest in their business. Um, for us, that is, 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 is not necessary. And also the fact that any idea is a good idea and deserves a chance. You know, we've had people that, that have come through our courses that have had their ideas batted down and um, sometimes even ridiculized uh, in, in traditional education, universities, growth hubs, like all of the traditional places where, where people usually go to ask for business advice. They have said, this is a crazy idea. Like, why aren't you doing something uh, that will get you more money or something like that? And when they come to our course and realize that the business advisor or the rebel advisor is not their client, that their actual client paying customer is a completely different person that probably isn't even in the room. You just need to go out there and ask them if your idea is good and to actually pay for it. Then they realize that it, it might be a good idea. It's just that the audience that they usually get, their family, their friends, their, their business hub advisor, their employment advisor, um, it's not their ideal customer. They just need to find it and actually um, um, realize that all, all ideas deserve a chance. Even if it fails, they do deserve a chance to be tested. Tell us about one or two success stories that you've had from people who come to the courses. Okay. I mean, oof, we have we have we have plenty, like thousands, thousands of of, of stories, but I will. I always like to talk about um, one of the gentlemen that came to our first business course in, in England, um, in, um, what is the name of the place? Something up, Western, Western upon Mare? Uh, Western Supermare. Western Supermare, yeah. That was the first ever Rebel Business School course. So I'll tell you about him and I'll tell you about one of our uh, Colombian stories, which I also quite uh, like to always uh, tell to people. Uh, but the first one is uh, the gentleman that had uh, gone to jail, right? He had a, he was uh, had gone out of jail, but he couldn't find a job because of his uh, past uh, having having served time in a in a UK jail, and he couldn't get a loan. So he wanted to start a restaurant, 
but he couldn't do it because he 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 was unable to get the the money to get started, and he wasn't unable to find uh, the initial push by somebody that would believe in him and, and and give him a job. What ended up happening when he came to the course was okay. We we told him. So you want to set up a restaurant and you think that you need, you know, to 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 have a, a lot of money to pay for the rent, a lot of money to pay for, you know, a, a sous chef and a lot of money to pay for waiters. But I, I mean, you clearly enjoy cooking. Do you know if people like the way you cook? And he was like, I, I think they do, but I, I haven't really tested. OK, so if you're going to get yourself into debt and especially a debt that you're not able to currently get a loan from. Uh, why don't you test your idea here and now and, and 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 find a way to see if what you cook can actually be bought by people? Um, what is your favorite dish? What is the thing that you most like to, to cook? And he went, my favorite dish is lasagna. I, I love to cook lasagna. So we went, okay, like sell it to a room. Like tell people in this room that you're here right now, uh, if they're gonna be here for the next two weeks if they want to buy your lasagna, like and 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 see if they like your cooking. So he went out. He started talking to the people. And he, he came back to Simon. Simon is 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 uh, one of the co-founders of their own business school. Um, currently my 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 business partner and, and boss as well. Um, and he said, Simon, uh, he was like really worried face, and and Simon thought, okay, he didn't sell one lasagna. When, when what happened? He went, Simon, I got 35 orders for lasagna for tomorrow. So I was like, wow, but why are you so worried? Like, that is good. He went, I don't have the money to buy any of the of the of the ingredients. I don't have any money to to you know to to go out and, and pay for a, a baking tray. And Simon went, Okay, you go out there and ask for the money from these people in advance. Like tell them to pay the lasagna they're gonna eat tomorrow. And, and, you know, hopefully you will get some money. So he went and he started asking people. He actually got the money. And what he learned in that moment, uh, and it's something that we teach a lot in, during, during the course, is the value of creating something, uh, the value of, of selling something before creating it, right? He was able to get money even before having cooked the lasagna. And that is possible for virtually any uh, business. So... Currently, he is uh, he owns his restaurant. He has been doing this for for a long time. He got started during the course, and is uh, uh, an example of of a life changing situation. That's number one. Uh, number two, we have this lady in in Colombia called Luz Amparo. Luz Amparo uh, is the leader of a an, an organization, a women's organization that has more than one thousand two hundred women. Uh, that have lost their fathers, their brothers, their husbands, their sons and brothers uh, to the Colombian conflict. So that they, they became head of households because of the armed conflict at some point. Um, and when she came to the courts, she was already running this, but she didn't have a, she didn't even have a website. She didn't have social media. She never had even a, um, got an email she didn't have a personal email to 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 to, to her account um i went well we need to show the world the great work that you're doing because every week you get you know 1200 women come uh, speak about their experiences train themselves in order to become uh, knowledgeable in, in, in knitting in crafts making like so impactful what you're doing but you know you're not getting funding from the government you are not getting uh, support from from the local community because people don't know you and she went okay but i don't even have an email what what should i do so one of the days uh, of the rebel course entails teaching people how to build a very simple website uh, you know one page landing site which basically enables them to take the first step uh, luz amparo on that day opened her email started her web page started her instagram and currently has her website running, showing the the, the world what she's doing. Um, and when when she left the course at the end of the of the of the of the two weeks, we asked her, okay, what was your biggest learning? And she said, I learned that I can do things that seem very difficult, and I can do them for free. So nowadays, she goes into a public library, 
and she gets two or three of her collaborators to you know, update the website from a public library. She doesn't have a computer, but she knows where to get a computer in the, in the, in the public library. Um, she doesn't have any programmers. She doesn't have any graphic designers, but the people that support her have been helping her build the website and build the, the social media. Um, and she keeps on, on, on running this fantastic program that before, uh, you know, wouldn't have been known to, to many people, uh, but now is. So I think it's, it's one of the most inspiring stories that, that, that I can tell from, from the Colombia experience. There, I just thinking about it, there's quite a few captains of industry and people with very large company who actually built their business the rebel way. I mean, most notably, probably would be Alan Sugar, who was given 50 pounds by his father and told to get on with it. And he built everything from that. I don't think he had much education or anything like that. Could it be that it, a lot of it is just helping people use their common sense and not listening so much to what they're told out there that they should do? And, uh, you know, and actually they just almost sometimes it seems to me it's people who are too too dumb to know it can't be done and they just go out and do it. Yeah, I think I think there there is a, there is definitely a, a, a bit of that. Uh, Another thing that we teach people on, 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 on day one of the Rebel course, which is how to get things for free. And one of the tactics that we mentioned is uh, bartering. And bartering, you know, I can, I can, if I'm a consultant and I give you my consulting services, uh, what do I get in, in exchange if you don't have any money? Well, you can, if you're a, a, a graphic designer, you can design my website. Or um, if you, I don't know, if, if you sell cupcakes, you can give me free cupcakes, whatever. And as you say, David, bartering has been part of humanity since the beginning of times. Like we're not teaching anything that is new. We are not teaching anything that is revolutionary. Um, it's just going back to the to the basics and uh, doing like simplifying stuff. Sometimes you know business schools and and growth hubs and accelerators and other uh, traditional business support uh, get to technical uh, and, 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 and confuse being uh, jargony and, and, and too complex with actually getting things done. And in reality, what the vast majority of people probably, what, what accelerators or growth hubs or other, other or traditional uh, business support or business education entities do is required when people are further down their entrepreneurial journey and that is fine as well. But to get started, you don't need that level of complexity. You don't need a 10-page business plan with two-page financial projections that, that, that probably you don't know how to do. You just need to go out there and, and, and sell. And for that, you need, your, you, know, you need your charisma and you need your resilience and you need your creativity more than anything else uh, and not a, a university degree or... Uh, you know, uh, a financial background that will allow you to to prepare cash flows. So that's that's the way we 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 see business at least getting started, making the complex simple instead of the other way around. I mean, tell us a little bit about your own background. Okay, uh, well, I am of course originally uh, from Colombia. Um, I I I. I lived there uh, for part, partly all, all of my life. I had to emigrate to the USA due to the Colombian conflict at one point of my, of my childhood. When I was like uh, 10 or 11 years old, we, 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 we uh, uh, had to leave home because of, uh, you know, we were getting uh, death threats. So we, we had to leave momentarily to the, to the USA. Uh, but my dad decided that it was important for us to go back home and, and, and grow home because in his words, the best place to, to generate impact is within our own community. And I think that was a, a, a very good decision. We ended up going back and for a while, when, when after I went to, to university, um, I actually became a, a, a solicitor. I'm actually a, a qualified solicitor back home. Um, I uh, used to do mergers and acquisitions um, which is a very specific field of law. Uh, and I worked in, in, in this field for, for a while until I decided to go and work 
for my family company. My dad and my mom were always very entrepreneurial. And I knew that someday I would I would go back and 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 work for my for my family. Um, so while I was doing that, um, I thought that getting an, an MBA or getting a business degree um, in another country was the solution to my company's problems. The company was struggling a little bit. Um, so I said, okay, I need to get educated in order to save the company. Um, and paradoxically, what what, ha- what ended up happening is I, I got a scholarship uh, to come to the UK and, and, and study here uh, along with my wife. Um, that's why we came here. That's why we settled. But paradoxically, uh, what ended up happening when, when I left the country and when I left the company is that the company went bust. <laughs> so uh, a big lesson for me uh you don't need an MBA to run a business. You just need to be there present. And, and, and I think that was the most clear and uh, direct way for me to, to find that out. And, and, and the most difficult one, because I had to go through the whole one year process and, and still to this day, it, 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 it has been an, a, a thing. Um, and when I came to the, to the UK, I started several companies. So uh, with some friends from, from my business school, we started our neurotechnology company. Then we started a, a consulting company. We started a tea import company. So, you know, I, I've, I've been running businesses in different fields, in different countries for, for a while. Um, but the thing that drew me to Rebel when I first met uh, Alan, the other co-founder, was uh, the purpose that, that it has. And when I approached him to, to tell him, hey, let's take this to Colombia, uh, you know, allow us to 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 take this model to to the to to the developing world and and especially to South America. Um, the main thing that stuck out to me was the purpose and the intention of doing something meaningful, right? So I I I have been doing law. I, I've done you know fire prevention, engineering, consulting, neurotechnology, like a lot of things, but I've never before found a bigger sense of purpose than what I find now. And that's why I'm doing Rebel both in Colombia and the UK um, currently. Um, yeah, that's probably a lot about me. You obviously have a, a strong sense of social justice, of empowering people who are un- underprivileged. Where does that come from? Mm, I don't know. I guess it 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 just comes from... From growing up in 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 in, in Colombia and knowing uh, and being fully aware that I do come from a from a from a from a position of privilege, like most of the people in my country uh, live, like probably sixty percent of people live with you know a dollar a day, less than that potentially. Um, uh, not many people will 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 be English speakers. Not many people. Um, we will have had the access to 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 even a primary, not even a, a a secondary or a university education. So I know the that 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 coming from a position of privilege and seeing um, all of the things that social inequities have created in 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 my country, all of the of the pain and suffering, um, and you know we we have been killing each other for two hundred years since we started as a nation, and we've been in a civil war for seventy years. And, and there is a, 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 a political component, there is a, um, a uh, drug trafficking component as well, but at the very core of it, there is social injustice and uh, just uh, an unfair society. So uh, if I can contribute to making things more balanced in any way, uh, that is something that, 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 I, that, I, that I really want to do. And one of the reasons why I have decided to stay in this country and, and continue doing the work that I'm doing in the UK currently is because I see a more equal playing field. Like, of course, there are still many issues in, in, in this country, and that is true of any nation. But if if uh, countries like this have made something very well, is uh, make the playing field more uh, uh, fair, for everyone, and I know there are still a lot of, uh, of of class differences and imbalances, but everyone seems to be more similar in 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 a very uh, comparatively similar position. 
And I want to learn from that. And I want to be able to, 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 to bring some of those knowledge and learnings back to, to my country so that we can finally, you know, uh, I, I know we, we won't, Rebel won't sort it out, but if we can help a couple of people get out of the, of the, of the, you know, poverty lines and, 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 uh, and, and get into being self-sustainable, that will be, uh, you know, my, my, my life mission accomplished. Brilliant. I think they use that. It's a terrible word, but it, it's um, the reality is you can't always change everything, but you can de-escalate it. Yeah. Make it make it yeah. easy a little bit. Just to wrap up with, uh, just tell us some of the great things about Colombia and the, you know, there must be some very joyful traditions and wonderful things there besides the sunshine. Can you tell us a few of those? Yeah, I mean, I I, I, can, I think I would be able to talk about Colombia for hours and hours. I think it's it's uh, the best country in the world, like by far, um, and uh, something that 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 uh, many people don't often realize is that you know it's not just sunshine because that is probably our our our, our biggest asset, and it's that it is a very biodiverse country. Um, so we are currently the second most biodiverse country in the world. We we have the highest number of, of birds, the highest number of, of butterflies, the highest number of fruits. And even though Brazil, which is the first most biodiverse country in the world, is like 10 times bigger than Colombia. So Colombia has a very geographically privileged position um, that allows it to be, you know, we, we, we get the sunshine in the beaches, in the in the Caribbean, we get uh, my, my city, uh, where I, the capital city where I'm from, it's high in the Andes Mountains. So it is not warm all year round. On the contrary, it's a little bit like, I always tell people, it's, it's like London. It's a big city, uh, you know, uh, cold weather, rainy. And, and that's fantastic that if you get in a car, in a bus or in a plane and you drive for two hours or you are in a plane for an hour, you're already in a Caribbean paradise, or if you go south, you're in a jungle uh, paradise, or if you go to the uh, northeast, you are in, in the snow, in the snowy peaks. So it's it's a very, very varied country. And I think that um, it has been, a, a, it's one of, a, of our greatest assets. And the other thing that I think is fantastic is just the, the warmth of the people. Like people are um, always welcoming, they, they, they love and are very patriotic. We always like to talk about uh, about Colombia, about our culture, um, about the the great things that that have come out of Colombia. We sometimes get a bad rep, you know. Um, many people will probably immediately think about you know drugs and and, and Pablo Escobar and and violence, uh, but I think things have been changing a lot, and and, and we are starting to uh, get rid. Of that bad reputation and start to to show off some of the of the of the very good things that that, that we have as a as a nation and I think that uh, bringing some of that warmth and, and some of that uh, ideology of positiveness into the UK has has uh, allowed me to meet some wonderful people here as well. Right. One one final question. Besides your wife and family. Uh, you've traveled all over the world. What has been the highlight of everything that you've done? What was your favorite moment? My favorite moment uh, of traveling specifically, you mean, David, or? Anything at all. You're in, like, I'm imagining you're about in your 40s. Uh, so okay. of 40 odd years, what mm -hmm. has been the highlight? Well, I, I think honestly, um, having had the, the possibility of, of living in, in the UK, uh, that for me, like I wasn't expecting to to get that to to have been able to start a business in the in the UK when 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 I first left and came to study, I never uh, expected this 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 would happen at all. It, it was not in my plans. Um, so having been able to 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 experience uh, this country and and yes, I you know I've been. Uh, through all of South America, I've been to countries in Africa, I've been to, to many countries in, in, in Europe and uh, have thankfully lived through many really good experiences in the Caribbean as well and, and, and Central America. But 
I think that uh, the simple things of settling in, in a country and, you know, going out and, and, and just having a coffee uh, while you're living there, uh, it seems small and it seems uh, meaningless, but it is very um, important to, to, to me and has become a, a, a big source of learning and, and, and development for me.